Hi, welcome back, and welcome back to uh, Joe's parents, where we are finishing off the oak retaining wall and hopefully getting it done before we leave tomorrow. Okay, we've just arrived back up here in Cheltenham and I've just been and picked up a whole load of materials ready for the job in hand. So I've just gone for an all-in ballast uh, pre-mix sand and gravel for our uh, concrete mix, cement over there and a load of just 10 or 20 mil gravel for drainage. So a little bit like last time, I'm staying overnight, Joe and the girls are up with me anyway, but the plan is for me to get absolutely everything set ready for me to uh, to hit the ground running tomorrow morning. I want to go along tonight and just level out all of the, uh, the the sleepers and the wall to make sure I'm happy with the gradient and I might even get around to lifting them all out, putting the gravel in and, uh, and then putting a, a strapping on the back. We need to pull them all out, we need to get a gravel bed in there and then we're going to put some steel strap on the back just to hold the curves exactly how we want them before we bed them down. So like I said, the first job was going to be to get gravel placed in the bottom of the trench. The reason for that is I don't really want the oak at the bottom of the oak in contact with the, the bare soil, especially because it's quite clay, well, fairly, fairly clay here in areas. So, um, so I'm just gonna put maybe 50 mil of gravel at the bottom. And what that'll do is just provide almost like a mini soak away at the bottom and also that gravel is going to help me level up all the sleepers before they go into the concrete. Um, so I can kind of use it to pack up some if I want them higher, go a little bit lower on some to get that even sort of curving that we're wanting. So my aim is to, to use our gravel as our packing as well as our drainage just to make sure we've got a fairly decent curve but also to make sure that the step in between each uh, height is a, a similar, um, I was aiming for about 50 mil so we've kind of got even stepping up and down. And I'm going to start strapping some, uh, some metal work on the back of these to hold everything in place for tomorrow. So what I've done is I've attached the first vertical sleeper just to a brace and just leveled it all up and that's screwed tight now so that won't move. Everything else is going to be anchored to this one and to do that I'm just going to use some normal stop bead for plastering but you could use metal strapping. Uh, this is all I could find uh, when I went to the store but this is flexible enough that it'll help us form our curves but also strong enough that it'll hold them together. So this is working pretty well. We've got the, uh, everything leveled tight to that first post. And now I've got this steel strap on the back here. And although it's fairly flimsy, it's obviously rigid as a length. So it's holding everything up that way. And I'm just using this spacing block here to even out our steps.
so I don't think I'm gonna get it all done tonight. As it's getting pretty dark. Bracing on the back is working well. Gravel in the bottom is proving to be the best way to get our heights perfect. Um, and the spacer seems to be doing well. So, we'll pick this up in the morning and hopefully we can get this job done. So, late start, it's already nine o'clock. The plan is to just finish off the rest of that dry fit, hoping that can be done within about 45 minutes. Then we'll get geared up with the cement mixer and pretty much from then on, it's just a case of mixing up, bedding in and working my way back around that way. seen this done on the visible face using steel strapping which is you know if you actually want the look of it and in which case you want to um, make sure that everything's level whereas here this is all going to be hidden and by the time the concrete's gone off this serves no structural benefit. See we need to come up quite a bit there, so we'll just add more gravel in. Do you need to put them all in? Yeah, I'm making sure they're all nice and straight before I put the concrete in. You know, in the mixer. Yeah. Like when we laid the patio. Yeah. With the gravel and the sand. Yeah. And the cement. Per oh, perfect. Bye. See you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. Pass the inspection. next job is going to be to get the mixer fired up, get a load of this going and then uh, just work my way along. I'm still going to use the spirit level just to kind of tweak them as I go and I've put some bricks in as well just to, to level things out now but that strapping on the back as well as them being in curves they're almost self-supporting as they are. I don't really want to stain these sleepers at all and if I start putting in a wet mix of concrete things splash up uh, so I think if I do a fairly dry mix, I can pack it in, work it in there, tamp it down, and then just work my way along. So I roll the band back, get the mixer over to the hard sanding here, and then we'll make a start. Well, so the next batch is mixing up. I'll just show you what I'm doing at the front here. I've just gone along and trimmed um, around 120 mil, four inches, and in, well, four or five inches from the oak. And the reason for that is I'm going to use these old brick pavers or walling stone that have uh, been used here before as a way to help when they come to mow the lawn. So by setting these in, exactly the same height as the soil level, the wheel of the lawnmower can run on those. So 
sorry, you were relegated to the van because it was raining. Um, I didn't bring the GoPro, nor do I have uh, multiple tripods, so the shots for this video are not going to be quite as uh, interesting as the last video. But I'll give you a quick walk around now whilst the next load's mixing up to show you progress. So we're over halfway now. Those blocks are just dry fitted in just to uh, get an idea of how they're going to sit. The plan is to put more concrete at the back uh, just to kind of haunch it up and to also create a bit of a slope to make sure we've got no water building up against the sleepers. So every, everything up to that end curb is all completely level and straight now. As far as the mix goes, I've ended up nearer to five to five to one. Um, four to one, well, to be honest, uh, I don't think it's massively important with this job, but uh, the back of the ballast says six to one, the back of the cement says four to one. So uh, either they're trying to sell their own products or there's a bit of a leniency there. So we're gonna hit the middle and go five to one which is fine. I've actually started making it a little bit more of a wet mix because uh, that's kind of just flowing into the gaps a bit easier. Right, that's all of the main tool section done. Now I need to do the bit that peels off which is the much shorter sections, about three or 400 mil high, which will take around this lower bed here. What I'm doing now is laying that course of edging stones that I found um, in the original border and we'll reuse those to help with the mowing but also I think it just neatens the whole thing up. As you can tell most of this I'm making up as I go but I'm just following common sense rather than any instructions, which from my experience is the best way to go. You know, if you use your common sense and think things through, usually the outcome's pretty good. Oh, oh freshly cooked biscuits. Can I get one? Yeah. Did you, make them? you make these? Yeah. Come to help? Yeah. Is it sticky? Oh, yeah. Eh? I've just pulled out one here because I want to raise it up, but whilst it's out, I thought I'd show you what's going on in here and why I've put that gravel bed in. You can see there that the concrete is form, has kind of formed the wall on the sides, and then we've still got that bed of gravel down the bottom which hasn't filled with any of the fines or anything from the concrete. So hopefully that's gonna stay pretty clean, that gravel for now, and uh, that will kind of give us our little soak away. So pretty pleased with the outcome so far. There's a little bit of tweaking to do. Um, so I'm gonna go along and, and backfill this with a little bit more concrete and haunch it. And what I wanna do is haunch it in a way that, if you imagine the sleepers like this, the concrete is sloped on a kind of a back slope back towards the bed. We're then going to fill uh, the you know the back of the sleepers with a gravel uh, section, and then we'll use a membrane. So the membrane is what needs to go in now because I'm going to try and pin that down with the haunched concrete. So it's kind of laid within the concrete to tie it down.
So a bit of explaining as far as why I've gone this route. This isn't any normal raised bed. Um, because it's so deep, it's not like a raised border that you can just walk up to and weed. Um, because we can't reach there, it just makes sense. They just wanted something that's really kind of low maintenance. The rest of the garden is, uh, you know, more traditional borders and they've got to you know, weed and keep on top of that. This, they just wanted something low maintenance and nice to look at. So I suggested that we use a fabric and then we have a really good thick mulch on top and just plant perennials in here that you don't need to worry about um, and that they'll just kind of keep themselves to themselves. At that far end in the corner I might forgo putting down the fabric just so that they can plant bulbs and things there. But for the main part um, we're going to put the fabric on and the, the secondary purpose and one that's quite important I think uh, is this is actually going to help uh, protect our our oak. If this was a really big wall or retaining a big amount of uh, earth then you'd want to put a drain in, a slotted drain. But I think um, because we're vertical here any moisture build, water build up behind can get through, there's always going to be gaps there. Uh, but what I don't want is the soil getting in touch with the, the oak and to do that I'm going to put the membrane to hold back the soil, gravel on this side and the membrane will basically just stop the fines and the, the silt of the soil making its way through and, and over the years the gravel would just kind of become saturated. So this will help the gravel stay free draining and I think that is my plan. Right, that's pretty much secured. Let's go mix up some concrete, pin this down, and then we can have a bit of tidy up. So the wagon is packed up and we're done, we've got to leave very soon and uh, I've still got to have a look in the loft at a dodgy ballcock. But anyway, I'll give you a quick look around, kind of walk around what we've done and how we've left it and then we'll pick this up on the final day which should see the whole thing finished. Bricks are all in, I think that's really made it, uh, that really shows the definition of the curve and really helps the whole uh, look of things and like I said it's going to help with the mowing. Sorry, seriously windy, so apologies if the audio's uh, poor. This area here has got to be finished next time. It's got to be graded out and leveled, ready for the six or seven uh, slabs that are going to go there for the trailer to sit on. We need to build a short fence around that just to kind of screen it off. There'll be more weed fabric to go down in this area. I'm going to cover most of it, but they want just the kind of first metre or so left at the front, just soil. Uh, we'll still bark over everything, but it just means that the bulbs and things uh, that they want to plant will be able to come up through. So there we are, the sleepers are in, the wall is built, and we just need to be patient now, let it all go off nice and solid. We will be back up when I get a chance next. I'll arrange the delivery of all the bits and we'll be able to finish it. So if you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. If you want to see more kind of landscaping sleeper construction projects, then I will link to our project from last summer at the end of the video. But apart from that, remember if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.